Hey everyone, it is Thursday 29th of May and this is Thingcast episode 3. Um, sorry about the delay at the beginning there. I was hopefully trying to get a special guest in on the show but um, once again that hasn't worked out. Uh, technical difficulties. But um, okay, so here we are. Uh, Thingcast episode 3. Again, if you want to join in the live Q&A, uh, while this is airing, you can um, follow the link. It's going to appear in the bottom left corner of the video uh, when you first load up the YouTube watch page. Um, hey everyone. And if you could just leave your questions, uh, you know, if anything comes to mind, it's better if you ask the questions now because when I get to the Q&A part of the video, uh, otherwise I'll just have to kind of wait around for um, your, your questions or comments. But anyway, uh, the big news this morning is that, uh, well, morning in Australia, is that Apple has uh, announced, they have confirmed that they will be buying Beats Electronics for $3 billion. And this was confirmed in a New York Times article, which I will link to you, but also I'll just show you the article itself because it is, uh, you know, it is quite a doozy. Uh, let's just bring it up here for a second. <laughs> it works now. Oh, okay. Ah, yes. No, Ali. Okay. No. Hang on. Just a just a sudden uh, surprise. <laughs> oh, I didn't expect that to uh, pop up. Okay, cool. Um, we have joining us. Uh, I think my video feed has just dropped out. But um, we have Ali Borg joining us. He is a longtime member of HeadFi and also has his own YouTube channel. Uh, hi, Ali. Good to see you. Good to see you. Am I coming in okay this time? Uh, yeah, no, I can definitely hear you. Um, and I'm pretty sure the audience can hear you too. But if the audience can't hear you, just let me know in the Q&A. Um, okay. okay, so Ali, what's your first take on this Beats uh, Apple acquisition? We've both read the New York Times article now, which I'll just bring up on the screen. Um, and basically it details how Apple has decided to, uh, to confirm their purchase of Beats Electronics for $3 billion. And there's quite a lot of analysis in this article, so it's worth a read. Well, my take on it is kind of a, it's not surprising, but in a way it's kind of strange. Uh, Apple has been basically, I guess you could say, devoting a lot of their energy to their um, cloud uh, resources. And let's face it, their Apple store has been taking a hit lately because of the streaming services. So it makes sense they would uh, buy Beats. What doesn't make sense is it seems like they're like, joining forces. Usually Apple doesn't do that. They basically buy in, take the idea, and basically incorporate it into their ecosystem. This is very strange for them to be doing this. Yeah, way. this is, this is I, I would say the manner in which they've done this is quite strange. I mean, I totally understand that Apple would want to do a subscription service. Uh, I totally understand that Apple would want to, uh, you know, maybe potentially move into headphones. I don't really think that's really the focus of the deal. I think they want the subscription music. But my general impression is that they focus on buying very small companies and uh, integrating them into their services. And what is kind of being suggested now by Tim Cook is that Beats Music, the subscription service, will run parallel as a separate kind of entity to everything else Apple does, which is really quite unusual. Yeah, which is really strange, too, because if they're going to offer two services, how long is it going to be before those two services start butting up against one another? Well, you would assume that I'm, I'm guessing that they may... See, the parallel that you can draw is, uh, for instance, Facebook buying a huge number of companies now. Uh, for instance, Facebook buying WhatsApp or Facebook buying Oculus, where they've decided to buy the company. So on Facebook buying Instagram, where they've decided to buy the companies but leave them relatively untouched and running as independent entities, uh, which itself is an interesting kind of strategy. Uh, mm. I suspect it's because they don't want to kill the golden goose 
in Facebook's case, but Apple is a... Sorry. Yeah, no, no, Apple is a very vertically integrated company. The tendency for them is if they want something, they want an Apple, they want it, the Apple name on it, they want it to be integrated into that family. So um, I don't think Apple, I don't think Beats, the subscription service would be untouched for very long. Here's an interesting question, though. Uh, considering that uh, Beats is very much a record company of itself and uh, the executive who runs it is uh, very much a record company mogul, um, I know the service is being offered in North America. How about the international community? Will it be expanded soon? If so, will it be more integrated with Apple? Or are we talking uh, a nightmare in licensing also? Another thing I'm kind of wondering is, will this one company eventually start to um, take over the streaming services of Apple and try and start demanding that other artists not be represented under their label? It could happen. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. I mean, part of the story here is uh, the other kind of side of this is uh, from the New York Times article. They're saying that uh, Apple may have uh, bought this company primarily or of one of the biggest reasons is just to acquire key personnel who have connections with the music industry, like um, the, the co-founder of Beats is Jimmy... Ivine, Iovine. I'm actually still not sure how to pronounce that. It's an Italian last name, so it's uh, Jimmy Iovine. It's Iovine. Jimmy Iovine. Yeah, and he's uh, known for being a very shrewd uh, operator within the industry. Itself. Right. Definitely. And, um, yeah. Very hard person to work from, from what I understand. I wish uh, Mr. Um, well. Our or I can't. I don't think I should mention the name, but I wish uh, our uh, buddy from uh, who has a music background and started in the record industry could actually pipe in on this. He, I would think he would know more about Iovine than we both do. Yeah, that that would be interesting actually to have a bit more of a insider's idea of that. Um, well, it, it, it's the other key kind of personnel I hear is uh, Dr. Dre himself, who is now possibly uh, the only billionaire in hip hop, as he apparently declared to one of his uh, friends, who subsequently just leaked it all over Twitter and everything like that. Um, I have to say the the potential for a culture clash there, I think, is a little. Uh, severe. I don't really see, I mean, maybe Jimmy Irvine, but Dr. Dre uh, in, in the Apple corporate culture. <laughs> it, it feels a little strange, honestly. It doesn't feel like a marriage um, made to last. I don't think it will last, but I do think that Apple uh, is shrewd in one way, in that, uh, who knows, uh, Beats could have been uh, basically just putting out tenders, seeing if anybody's interested, and they may have just acquired them to try and keep away from other also, we really that's don't know true. the inside facts. So that's very true. Very and we, we don't even know what they're going to do with the service now. So you know, it's very early days. Mm. I don't know. I I keep thinking like um, Apple is trying to make itself more appealing to the cooler crowd, so to speak, because they sort of lost some of that cool factor over the last four or five years. Maybe that could be why they moved this way. It's, I don't know. It, Definitely Apple is under pressure at the moment to demonstrate that they are an innovative company, but um, I'm not sure that the kind of optics of this particular deal are that great. I mean, the way it looks from the outside, it looks like that Apple is kind of like that uncool kind of uh, dad who's, who's just trying to buy uh, his way into, uh, into looking hip. I mean, essentially, they, they haven't done anything. They've just spent $3 billion on their $100 billion cash pile to try and get some cred. Uh, that's what it kind of looks like, and I think that's what a lot of people are just going to interpret this as, uh, given the reputation of these headphones. They're very much the pot-bellied uncle who comes to your birthday party <laughs> when you're turning 16, turns on some music, it's supposed to be cutting edge, starts doing a, a chicken dance in front of your friends, is what I'm thinking right now. You know? Yeah. Feel yeah. that way. I don't know. But the thing is, Apple has been known to, to basically buy into already um, markets that are established. And they do put their little brand and their kind of um, 
technical edge and know-how behind it and refine it. If um, if Beats actually sits back and lets Apple work, I think they can really put out a really great streaming service. I do think uh, with the Beats logo, it will go a lot farther than, than just with the Apple logo. Well, apparently um, the Beats subscription service is very good, as, as what I've heard from it. I've never actually... I've only seen commercials, but apparently it's quite good. Have you have you tried it yourself? No, it's not available in Canada currently. That's made right. of the, yeah. the main problems because of licensing problems. Yeah. Uh, but I understand a lot of American people I do know, a lot of people I chat with love the Beach service. Uh, you may say what you want about their uh, headphones and their gear. Their service, their streaming service is very good. Playlists, yeah. uh, you can tag stuff. It's got all the earmarks of a very good service. It's also, uh, there's been rumblings of the book and bringing in a very social aspect behind it. Not unlike what At Last FM has been doing for the last few years. There's been talks about them doing that. If Apple could get in on that and maybe put a service together with Beats that would refine it, we could see a game changer, yes, but the problem is... I don't see either of these sides working together very well. They're just so different. <laughs> well, um, I've, I've, uh, you, you, often see, you often see with these aqua hires for large Silicon Valley firms, they buy the company for some personnel, and then the rest of the personnel just leave the company, um, which is which is really interesting. Uh, I should um, we're getting some good questions in the Q and A, so I might pop over to those in just a second. But something really interesting, uh, some part of the news, which is probably going to get buried in all of this, but this is really interesting, is that the company which designs the headphones, the actual design firm, um, Ammunition, uh, has de has declared on their on their company blog that they will be moving on now, and they will no longer be the design firm for uh, Beats Electronics going forward. Uh, the, the actual chief designer of uh, Ammunition who was designing these headphones was actually a former Apple employee, which is why I guess uh, he would have to kind of step down because it would be quite awkward for him to go back to uh, working Apple. Uh, Apple. So that's a, you know, a, a signal that um, it's not going to be entirely a uh, smooth or a, a independent kind of transition. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, usually old employees who leave Apple don't exactly like come back to Apple. Um, Apple is known for being, how can I put it, once you've been put out, they really don't want much to do with you, except you being Steve Jobs. Yes, yes, yes. well, yes, we all know that story. But um, yeah. anyway, uh, we've got some good questions on the, uh, on the Q&A. Um, and first from Timothy, who asks, do you think that the sound signature of the Beats headphones will change with the purchase, or maybe have models with the usual bass heaviness and some models with a more neutral sound signature? Um, and I think this is a this is the second part of this acquisition that I guess we we should talk about is the question of how Apple is going to treat the headphone side of the business. Uh, as we all know, being members of HeadFi, um, Beats rather, headphones do not have the best of reputations, though I have found that uh, in my review of the um, Beats Studio 2013, it certainly seems like they've moved on a little bit from their initial bad reputation for audio quality. Um, but yeah, how much do you think that they would touch the actual headphone side of the business? Uh, headphone side of the business, I don't think they're going to touch anything having to do with the headphone side of the business. Um, no, makes they're not known for doing a headphones, and they've done a terrible job a few times they have tried to uh, get involved in headphones. Yeah, I, I mean, um, mm. if, if, we, if we look at the history of Apple uh, audio products, there's the uh, initial iPod earbuds, which uh, they OEM with Fostex, and those have been widely derided as awful. Uh, there was the Apple iPod dock, actually. If any of you remember that, they made that big iPod dock, and apparently that was actually quite high quality, but it didn't sell very well because it was very expensive. And then there was the new version of the... or uh, well, there was a dual-balanced armature earphone that they made, uh, which they still make, the uh, fancy version of the in-ears, which they said was really, really great, but um, 
And apparently it's a bit underrated in the community, but it is popular. And then there's the uh, new version of the EPods where they said we measured like 700 million people's ears and then uh, we, we designed the perfect shape and I bought those EarPods and I put them on my ear and I went, well, they don't fit, so I guess I'm just not... Uh, <laughs> I just am not a human being, apparently, under Apple's kind of scientific Guess thinking. Guess what? I think we're the same way then, because they didn't fit me very well either when I got my iPhone 5. Um, yeah. I mean, I was surprised at how good they sounded. I thought they sounded pretty decent for a pack-in pair of earbuds, but uh, they did as, not feel comfortable. As far as freebies go, I would have to say that AirPods actually do sound uh, pretty decent. Um, if you buy them separately, they're kind of expensive and uh, quite overpriced, in my opinion. But yeah, it's a pretty decent earpod as far as I'm concerned. Mm. Um, I see them more being closer to the mantra of, let's say, a Bowers and Wilkins than to a Beats Audio. Yes, if they were to start the... doing gear, it'd be more of a Bowers and Wilkins. Let's face it, they have been doing um, some business with Bowers and Wilkins, the P5, the P7, and whatnot. So. Yeah, it, uh, it's into their look, their their trend, and their their kind of the kind of feel of what Apple has wanted with their gear. Uh, I think um, Bowers and Wilkins and um, Bang and Olufsen would be the yes, the, yes. And even even Bose, right? Uh, those are the kind Bose. of brands that I would be thinking that Sennheiser too. I think the Imperion came out in Apple Store before. Anybody else got a chance yeah. to get it, or am I wrong on that? Uh, and the Amperia, no, I got mine uh, outside of the Apple Store, but they did get an exclusive on the blue Amperia, I believe. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. If it was a Sennheiser, I'd uh, I'd be a little more, I'd take their gear design more seriously than uh, than Beats. But yeah. like I said, who knows? Um, yeah. Apple isn't one for big red uh, plastic uh, headphones, and right. with the rest. They uh, allowed those uh, headphones to be sold in their uh, store just because they were very popular and very hip at the time. If they were to try and redesign a headphone and uh, try and make it more Apple-like, I could see uh, maybe it going far, but they need good engineers. Let's, I'm going to say very bluntly, uh, anything I've heard from Beats has been very disappointing to me. Right. I do know that right. sense of Beats and Monsters part of the way. I've heard some of the Monster new headphones, not bad. I think there's been a definite improvement in Monsters uh, headphones since uh, Beats went went their way and they went their own separate ways. Well, uh, actually, I wanted to talk a bit about Monster for a second, but before we do, I just wanted to talk about that, that this particular question of what I think they'll do with the headphones. I, I agree with you. I don't really see them touching... Uh, that core kind of business very much. It, it, that's part of why um, $3 billion for an aqua hire is not that ludicrous in some ways because if it was Apple buying some sort of silly uh, startup firm with some brilliant engineers but they were making no money, then you'll go, well, $3 billion is insane. But they're buying a $3 billion, very profitable company that if they didn't do anything with it, it would just continue printing money for them. So I don't... I don't imagine that they really are concerned about the price in that respect. I'd be interested yeah. to see, yeah, I'd, I'd be interested to see if they will continue uh, bringing in any sort of uh, cross innovation between the Beats and the and the headphone products, just maybe behind the scenes, in the same way uh, Google when they acquired Motorola. Uh, they, they brought a lot of engineering know-how to um, Motorola in terms of a human very interface nice. design and, and everything like that. So maybe, I mean, it's, it's very early now. Here's the $3 billion question, though. When uh, everything gets finally signed and the T's are uh, crossed and the I's are dotted, exactly who's making what, when, and where, and what's the cut going to be, be between these two companies? Right. Yes, and, definitely. Uh, I mean... Who's going to have overall? Who's going to have the final say on what kind of products sees the shelves and what kind of streaming service is going to be provided? Who right. has the final say? Is what I want to know right now. And this is this is especially kind of relevant given the history of Beats Electronics and why we mentioned Monster just a second ago. And this is a Gizmodo article that I read quite some time ago. It's really interesting about the history of Monster's partnership. With uh, with Beats and basically, 
Monster lost everything in this deal. Uh, they did all the engineering for the initial line of Beats headphones. They got none of the recognition. Their names were scrubbed off the boxes when they parted ways. And basically, uh, nowadays, they say that uh, Beats basically says in statements that Monster only provided manufacturing assistance and zero uh, engineering assistance, which seems ludicrous because... Very much so, because um, till this day, Beats... Uh, sorry. To this day, Monster will always maintain. We're the ones with the engineers. We're the ones who uh, who have uh, the documentation to show the early uh, the early headphones, how we had thought up and how we had tuned it. We're the ones who thought it up. Period. Mm -hmm. And to this day, uh, Beast still says no. They just manufactured. Right. Right. Um, jumping back into the Q and A, um, there's a really interesting question from Aphex, and and I didn't actually think of this. Um, do you believe that the active firing of Jimmy Irvine would help Apple further their development of Apple TV? And that's a really interesting idea that they've hired, that they've acquired Jimmy so because he's good at negotiating content deals with the music industry. Maybe he'll be good at negotiating uh, uh, music, you know, kind of content deals with the TV industry. Uh, but I, I honestly, in all these questions, I, I am honestly very confused because I'm in Australia and I have no idea how the uh, American cable system works because it seems very, very confusing the way things work over there. Well, um, speaking as Canadian, it's very archaic in North America. Um, I.O. Vine is pretty much the golden goose in all this as far as Apple is concerned with his connections. That's how I see it. Uh, what's been holding back a lot of these streaming services right now is basically uh, content and basically um, licensing. The second you uh, go across the border, let's say into Canada or Mexico, license, licensing becomes a nightmare. So Iovine does have the connections to make this thing work. That could be, that's the most interesting question I've heard and actually made me think a little bit. Iovine yeah. could be the one I want. Um, very that's, much really, so. that's, that's very interesting because in the um, New York Times article they do state that uh, Steve Jobs was brilliant when it came to negotiations by all accounts with the, uh, the content partners but with his passing uh, maybe they've hired Jimmy Ivan just to uh, fill that void but it still seems like a very, I mean app, as I said before Beats is a profitable concern but still three billion dollars to hire one person uh, it seems like a heck of a risk. Um, I'm sure they could find. Surely there must be someone else uh, who they could have hired that that has uh, not a three billion dollar price tag attached to him. Well, Iovine has been around for a better part of two decades. He has all the connections and various uh, backgrounds and various uh, multimedia. He also has, as uh, far as I know, and uh, you not can't quote me on this, but. From what I have understand, he has quite a few connections in television and in general media. If he doesn't, uh, if he can't make it happen, he knows that people can make it happen. Right. He's very powerful in the industry. Very That's powerful. very interesting. That's well. Yeah. I guess we will see the fruits of that kind of uh, hiring. Um, Kenneth uh, has an interesting comment. He says, it's also interesting to note that the Beats acquisition brings Apple's first foray into other platforms, i.e. Beats Music on Android and Windows Phone. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, I don't think that's exactly true because uh, the iCloud services, uh, some, of them are available. some of them are available on, uh, on other platforms, but I see what you mean in terms of this will be the first time that Apple will have an app that is on an Android phone, right? Um, technically, and they've they've just announced this interesting thing where the uh, price for a subscription on an Apple device to Beats Music has actually dropped. So they've they've already begun a kind of incentivizing people to to uh, to kind of have that that version on that platform, which is maybe not the best of ideas in my opinion, but. Well, I think they're just trying to make themselves uh, seem more, uh, I say, provocative to the consumer right now. It would make sense they would lower their prices to bring those consumers in 
and lock them into the ecosystem. Once the person gets locked into the ecosystem and they invest into the ecosystem, it becomes a lot harder to leave. Right. Um, uh, but it's, it's I, I wanted to contrast this kind of, I mean, especially if you look at the way Microsoft is doing this kind of thing right now, right, where uh, Microsoft is actually, and this is why I'm actually continually impressed by what they do now in that, Microsoft is very much committed to cross-platform now. You can tell when they put out a product, they make it work. Like for instance, with uh, Google OneDrive, they've—I'm mean, sorry, not Google OneDrive. Um, Microsoft, uh, the SkyDrive, the OneDrive kind of thing that works on Mac, it works on Google, it works on Android, it works on Apple. Like it just—they are not in, like they are more interested in making sure the ecosystem is equal across all the platforms, so people actually use the service. And they're thinking a lot more like a. Um, more like an open company in that way, whereas uh, if you look at Apple in terms of saying, well, we'll drop the price on iTunes, like we'll drop the price on the iPhone, but we won't drop the price on Android. I feel like that that kind of approach will end up kind of biting them because it, it, it te- this kind of thing tends to annoy people as far as I know. Very much so. Um, Apple has to really open up their ecosystem in the near future. Um, how could I put this? Microsoft really came late into the mobile scene, and it really caused a lot of stir, and uh, it cost them a heck of a lot of money. They finally, uh, I guess you could say, got with it more, and now their streaming services and all the services they offer are quite very are quite good now. Uh, it took them a lot of learning to basically get some of the um, how could I put it. I want to say so much on here, but it's hard to really put it into words because there's so much that uh, we're covering here in this kind of uh, question. But Microsoft was late to the game, but now they've caught up. And with Microsoft caught up, that puts a lot of more pressure on both Google and uh, Apple. Because of uh, that pressure, Apple now, the, they're the company on the hot seat right now. They very much are. Uh, the iTunes Store has become... I guess you could say slowly becoming legacy in the modern world. That's, Am I that's correct? Very, um, yeah, I, yeah. I, I get that impression in, in the same way that, um, I mean, apparently Steve Jobs was very famous for saying people don't want to rent songs, they want to own them, but uh, apparently exactly. that's not true anymore. People want to just be able to listen to music as if it was like a, a utility, you know, that you have access, you can turn a tap, and then you have water come out of your tap, you want music to be like that as well, and if you don't pay for your utility, it gets cut off, and you don't, you don't get the music anymore, which is... Um, we very much become part of, um, of a society nowadays where um, stuff like collectors are becoming uh, dinosaurs. Um, you can't see it in my video, but uh, off to the side here, I got a shelf with about 400 CDs under my bed. Could I got you another turn the camera by any chance? Could you? Oh, oh sure. it's on a laptop, <laughs> and it's oh, it's uh, and like um, those CDs for me are the world to me. And before that, I was raised in a time during the '80s where vinyl was the world to me, and it was not just the music; it was just the experience of listening to the music, opening up that uh, that vinyl record, looking through the artwork, reading the footnotes, and looking at the uh, at the art, and that was for me a very tangible, enjoyable thing. With the advent of the MP3 player and um, what's been happening in mobile, and how more, how more powerful it's become over the years, and how the mobile platforms have become more and more powerful, uh, things like uh, CDs and vinyl, especially, has become a thing of the past, which is a shame, really. I feel because that of that. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, no, I feel the same way, uh, the way you talk about vinyl, I mean, for me, I didn't really have that experience, but I feel the same way about video games now when I buy them. Uh, you buy a box and it's just got some cards in it. It used to be when you buy a, a video game, you, you get the CD and you get this amazing manual that told you all the backstory and then you would get a little cloth map or something. I, mean, I play a lot of RPGs, so you get a little cloth map and everything like that. And nowadays you open a CD and it's just a bunch of um, game cards and a two-page instruction manual, which is... And that, oh, that's even so you know, why the CD nowadays. Nowadays, a lot of people <laughs> just put themselves a, street, a Steam account. And that's right, it. right, yeah. right. 
perfect example right there. But it, it ties into what, uh, what's happening with Apple and uh, with Beat. They very much know that it's the streaming service in the cloud that's the future. And a lot of people don't want to hold records anymore. They don't want that. They basically want just a streaming service. They want playlists, their favorites. And in 10 years' time, a lot of these people who have these uh, playlists and favorites, they don't really care about those playlists because they've moved on to a different genre of music and they've grown. And, but do, uh, you think, do you think the main... I mean, I always feel with subscription services, it's, it's possible I feel like the main possibility is that um, subscription services are more popular because they're much cheaper. That's what I always felt. It wasn't necessarily that people don't want to buy music, but it's, it's that... It's that you can buy an entire album for like fifteen dollars, or for like the same price for that month, you can listen to as much music as you want. And and to me, like when you look at that, like how unless you were crazy for some reason you you wanted to directly support the artist. I mean that's that's the only reason I really see in terms of when you buy a CD, apart from getting the physical um, item, you are in some ways giving more of a cut to the artist than you are with a subscription service. Um, in the in the short run, very much in the short run, it's very much cheaper. But in the long run, I think it could be a lot uh, more pricier. Because let's be honest, um, when I'm hitting 65, 70 years old, I'm not going to be buying that many CDs. Most of the music I love is going to be with me at the time. Right. Um, and if you're you but you're paying by month uh, monthly here, I don't buy like thirty dollars or twenty dollars CDs every month. Um, I do have cheaper options. For instance, I go to the flea market tons of times. I'll pick up tons of CDs for two bucks at a pop. Yeah, yeah, no, I've done that and, before. Yeah, and like uh, what's happening now is uh, with uh, the advent of the internet, too, you get a lot of artists that are coming out the middleman, which are the record companies, and they're very much publishing themselves onto uh, the internet, and they're dark, they're starting to get a following. So yeah. it's interesting, too. It just also ties into something else. I think the record companies know that they've lost control overall over the years, and they know it's they're only a ma as a middleman. Their their time is limited with the advent of the internet. They have to change. Their old format has to go. They're slowly starting to change to a new format that is the internet, that is mobile services, etc., etc. But it still remains that a lot of these people who call the shots are still the old dinosaurs who don't want to die. Yeah, I mean that's a that's a that's a whole talk in itself. I mean, we could spend an hour talking about. Oh, that's that's that the kind of talk we spend yeah. the next three days yeah. talking about. Yeah. Um, uh, I have a question from Apex, who says, uh, and "This is a bit of a funny comment. I don't know how serious this is, but what about the melding of the marketing department's uh, rap videos with Apple products or basketball players showing off Apple stuff? <laughs> or will this be about showcasing lifestyle with Apple Nest?" like devices being shown. Um, this is a little strange for me because in Australia, the Beats marketing is relatively, at least what I'm exposed to, is relatively minimal. Um, so there's Beats headphones in music videos and then there are some billboards. But apart from that, I don't really see it. I mean, they don't run ads on TV in Australia, uh, nothing like that. So yeah. around here, you see a lot of basketball players with the Beats headphones. You see tons of videos with the Beats headphones. They're very much in your face in the videos, and uh, it's uh, it's developed into very much a, a lifestyle statement, so to speak. The kids especially love to walk around with those Beats headphones, and they love especially to throw in people's faces. It's very much a lifestyle uh, kind of thing nowadays. Not like um, let me put it this way: the skateboarders. Those skateboards are very much a, a life statement for them. Right. Same thing with uh, a lot of these kids who love the beats. They love the beats for a reason. It's they look at it as Dr. Dre created those headphones. That's the kind of lifestyle they want. He's the kind of guy who's lived it, lived down and out. He's the kind of guy who came from the ghetto. They understand him. He understands them. He looks at them as the guy who never sold out. That's how a lot of these kids look at uh, Dr. Dre. Right. Is it the reality? Well, <laughs> um, not really I, I, in my opinion, but that's another conversation onto itself. Well, but, uh, you know, it's it's funny how different that is from my perspective, where I bought I, I bought the uh the 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 red the fire engine red version of the Beat Studios, but that's really you know for me that was the best of like that was the that was a, a, a the best of a, a bunch of bad choices, right? If 
if I could have bought the matte black version, I would because I don't want people to, to I, I don't want this giant thing around my neck that's just this garish kind of glossy color. Like, I wanted that black matte version very much. Um, so I, I guess it's hard to, I mean, I feel like I'm not, I'm not that old, I'm only 25, but I feel like I'm an old man in, in terms of saying, oh, the kids these days, they, they want to, they want to, the fancy headphone kind of thing. Uh, Let me put it this way, I'm 43, and for me, these AKG's Q701's are getting flashy because I got the green, lime green. Yeah, uh, I know, I mean, it looks like a Razer oh. product, you know the um, computer peripheral maker, Razer? They make gaming products, and and their color screen is all black and green. That's what it made me think of when I looked at the Q701. I mean. Yeah, but here's the thing too. That's the most interesting segue you've come, uh, or most interesting question you've come across yet. Because the thing is, their their background is just so foreign to one another. In that uh, Dre and company are very much in your face, very colorful, very loud, very boisterous. Whereas Apple has always been a more I guess you could say minimalist, subdued, quiet. Do everything behind, behind the scenes, and let it all out, and hit them hard, and uh, just wow them. Yeah, um, I mean, I yeah. mean, there's there's been examples of Apple marketing in the past where they've gone for that kind of wow factor. I mean, like if you remember the original iPod commercials and and, and the bold colors and everything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. But uh, there's definitely a different kind. I mean, you have with Beats, they have the kind of urban, gritty kind of uh, rap, like the authentic kind of uh, rags to riches uh, ghetto kind of story. Whereas Apple is very much more gonna like that. Their marketing focus is on trying to make you feel good about like being creative or being like individual or something like that. You know, it's it's it, there's no you know they have to play it a lot more safe, obviously, but it's it's obviously. I mean, I can't imagine an Apple branded uh, rap video, for instance. No, I can't no. see that happening. I, if you saw that, I think Steve Jobs himself would be turning this great of that. Ever. Right, right, yeah. right. I mean, he so, would want a, a Bob Dylan, um, Bob Dylan, maybe a Beatles, Apple Bob video. Dylan, even Deep yeah. Purple, but not Dr. Dre. I don't think so. You ever wonder what our music Tim Cook listens to? Uh, Tim Cook's a jazz guy, from what I understand. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not sure what kind of what kind of jazz, but I remember uh, I can't remember. I was on one of the blog, one of the Apple blogs. Somebody said that Cook was very much a very strong jazz guy. He loves jazz. Uh, apparently, a job was also into his jazz, believe it or not. Yeah, especially well, old classic jazz like uh, uh, who uh, Jimmy the uh, Jimmy Cobb Quartet. Apparently, he loved Jimmy Cobb Cook Quartet. Right. Um, I, 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 I was trying to find um, pictures this morning of Tim Cook wearing headphones. I couldn't find them because I was really curious. I think he's, he, I think he's been very careful to make sure that when he appears in public, he is not wearing headphones of any particular brand. Because I can't imagine he uses the earpods. Like I can't imagine he uses Apple's own earphones. Well, um, that's the hilarious part about this. Um, let me ask you a question. Have you ever seen a, a picture of Steve Jobs with uh, an Apple iPod in his uh, hands listening to it outside of Apple in his presentations? No. No, I, I can't say that I have, actually. Would you like to know why? Uh, why? Apparently, according to some of the Apple blogs, Jobs was very much a vinyl guy. And he uh -huh. exactly wasn't very happy with the iPod sound, but thought it was the vehicle to basically bring in a lot more money in for Apple, which really worked out good. But he has always been a hi-fi guy and very much a vinyl guy. Uh, Cook very much is of the same generation. He's also very much a hi-fi guy from my understanding. Though I understand he was, that he's also that big kind of fitness freak. I mean, he's apparently yes. hugely into his fitness, and I imagine he would listen to music at least while he would be on exercising. Well, who knows, but... Yeah, yeah, I've always heard that they're very much hi-fi guys, and that's one thing I've actually noticed that neither him or Jobs have ever. I've never. I've seen tons of pictures of these guys sitting at the coffee shops, walking out of here, walking around there, but I've never seen them wearing. Uh, like I've seen them working an iPhone, but I've never seen them with an iPod or iPod Touch ever, and never anything with earbuds and nothing anything with headphones. It's kind of interesting in itself, I guess. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, okay. Well, I guess we'll. I'll guess we'll need um, paparazzi. I guess to kind of really get into the lives of these tech uh, tech moguls. Yeah. Uh, the the next question I have from Kenneth is, uh, or a comment really is another benefit uh, from this deal is that Apple will inherit all the existing partnerships of Beats Audio with companies like Chrysler, Fiat, and Dodge. Apple will most likely kill Beats Audio on HP laptops but I wonder if they'll integrate it into their own iOS devices. Um, that is uh, interesting in, 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 uh, in Beats at some point was partnered with uh, HTC. Uh, HTC did have a stake in them, but they sold out of that stake. Um, but uh, for all the, all, the, um, all the comments about integration between Apple and uh, the, the car companies, I mean, they've said repeatedly that they would do that kind of integration with all the cars and having the system. I don't know. I haven't gone around buying new cars lately, but I still don't really see the fruits of that labor um, so much in terms of everyone saying, well, now they have actual car interfaces that work really well. Um, from what I understand, they have been slowly trying to integrate more into cars and stuff like, like Chrysler and Dodge. I haven't seen it myself. Uh, I do know there are a couple of brands out there, a couple of makes of cars that are, are, are iPod friendly. Um, to give you an example, my Santa Fe, if I, park, uh, if I uh, get a, a proper cable, I can actually plug in my uh, iPod and uh, I can uh, put the display up onto my Santa Fe and I can work my iPod. Oh, my so Santa it's, the same, it's the same device? Like it's the same interface on your... On your it's, iPod, it's, on it's basically a blue and blue and white uh, cheapy screen, and basically I can uh, scroll through my playlists and right, my right. my. Uh, you know, it's actually very primitive compared to what you do on iPod, but it that's does what I mean. Together well. I mean that's what I have in my um, uh, Volkswagen. Like it's the same kind of thing. You plug it in, and then it works with your phone. But those those interfaces have all just been so bad. Every single time I go into a car, and I think, how can they not have move to capacitive touchscreens by now, right? You use um, um, car interface dashes and they're all just garbage resistive touch. You have to press so hard to make anything happen and they just scroll incredibly slowly and everything. Um, maybe it's because they wear gloves in Europe so they can't use uh, capacitive touch, but... Not just yeah. that, but you got also, they're also limited by price. The automakers themselves cannot... They could put in a very good uh, touch capacitive screen if they really wanted to. They could research into a really good interface, but now we're talking uh, pricing. And let's be honest, the uh, car makers are very touchy about the pricing. They work within a very tight uh, market and within a tight bracket in itself. You start throwing in too much, and uh, now the price goes up to grand. Even and, then, I've, uh, I've been on luxury cars where I've I've noticed that the touch interface is still garbage, right? Like yeah. luxury brands where where you've already paid, like you should be getting the best experience that there is on the market, and they're still pretty garbage. Like I feel yeah. like it's it's something to do with the company culture there, where they because you know they don't really have an incentive, they don't really have competitors. Like if you want the car system in your car, it's going to be the one that comes with your car, so they don't have to worry about what other like. They don't really have to compete uh, to make the, the in-car dash any better or anything like that. Not really. The, the, true, but the thing you got to understand right now is what's going on for a lot of these uh, different uh, mobile systems. They very much don't want to be an open system where you can use it with anything and everything at any given time. If a car maker, let's say, um, throws his hat in with Apple and decides to uh, make their uh, cars Apple-friendly, iPod-friendly, whatever, right? Now uh, you got people who are now walking around with tons of Android handsets and Windows uh, handsets, and now those handsets are useless. They have to. Uh, what uh, the art, audit, auto industry has to do is try and figure out of putting in an interface and basically making their cars friendly for everybody, no matter what kind of handset or platform they use. Um, that's a very neat trick to pull off, considering both the uh, Window, I mean, uh, Microsoft and Apple and Google aren't exactly uh, would aren't exactly happy to be uh, letting their platform be uh, coerced or uh, marginalized in that way. Mm -hmm. 
they very much do not want a system that's that open because it does not uh, work well with what they have set up nowadays. Um, manufacturers are very much, how can I put it, they're in a catch-22 situation. They're damned if they do and they're damned if they don't. The Apple uh, iPod and uh, the iPhone is very popular, but uh, with the advent of Android, we're seeing the, the iOS system, the iOS OS, basically become very marginalized as the years go by. If they change right to Android, make an Android friendly, they uh, just basically got rid of maybe 100 million potential buyers who uh, have iPhones or are part of the ecosystem of Apple. So in a way, they're damned if they do and they're damned if they don't. So they have to be very careful how they um, engineer uh, such a system to make their cars media friendly. Well, I just feel like they're doing the worst of all worlds where they're just not... They're not doing anything in terms of like good integration, but uh, no, not at all, not um, at all. Very we're, primitive. We're we're butting up uh to almost an hour now for this discussion, so I think we should just top it off. But I wanted to ask uh one kind of question: if if um if in like six months or a year's time, Apple releases their own set of premium headphones and. Uh, you know, would would you be excited or would you be interested in, in any such kind of development? I'm come, I've come to the point in my life where I've heard a lot... You, you're also the same mind, Lachlan. We've heard a lot of hype in this kind of industry and in the hobby. Um, I usually sit back and let's say, and I'll say, okay, it looks interesting. Could it work? Maybe. I think if they would have put out a premium headphone and it was actually a very good sounding headphone, I would be more than happy to buy that headphone and I would be more than happy to say it's a great sounding headphone. Do I think they can do it? I don't know. I just don't know. Um, yes. When it comes to big marketplace, I am very cynical. I'm very cynical. You saw my Pono video. You know I'm very cynical about the Pono, but I do hope it uh, actually works out and I'm wrong. And if I'm I, wrong I on this account, I'll be happy. I really haven't spoken to anyone who's really involved in the in this kind of like in you know in this kind of community who's uh, very positive about the Pono really. But that's that's a that's another discussion for another yes. time. Um, but yeah, no. From my perspective, I would have to say if Apple put out a uh, put out a brand new premium headphone, I would at least give it a spin, like as I always do. But um, I would be really curious to see if they could actually um, pull it off. Uh, I, I can't say that it would be any more, uh, like, I, I don't think it would be any more high margin than uh, the usual products from Beats. I mean, they're already overpriced, so I, I don't expect to see, I, I wouldn't expect to be shocked by the uh, sticker price on the, the Apple-branded headphone. Um, but I, I'd be very curious. I will say this. When Apple does get their mind on doing something, 8.5, 9 times out of 10, they do do it right. Although other people might say it's lower than that, I do think they do do a good product when they put their mind up to it. If they actually did point their mind to it and did come out with a premium headphone, even if it had Beats stamped on it, I would be one of the first people down there to actually listen to that headphone when that Apple store opened up just to find out for myself. Yeah, definitely. No, I'd be... I'd be Pretty, uh, you'd have to be. You'd have to be pretty keen. I mean, it's the the world's biggest tech company with the world's largest, most profitable headphone company. I don't know if they're the largest, but they are the most profitable. I understand. But, most uh, profitable as of last year when they're, I think, yeah, was, no, two years ago as the their market share overtook, uh, it overtook Microsoft and uh, all the other tech companies. So it's very impressive. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. From what I understand, three billion dollars is just a drop in the bucket for Apple. Yeah, no, I think they have. They, they I think they're, they're uh, for all the talk about uh, Apple, um, you know, losing innovation. I think they have enough cash in their massive stockpile to to just sit on that for about three years at least before they have to really do anything. Yes, they're very um, impressive how they've uh, come from nothing and uh, built themselves up over the years. It's uh, very impressive, I must say. So. All right. Okay, well, that will basically mark the end of this discussion. Thanks to everyone who joined in on uh, the Q&A. Uh, Ali has his own YouTube uh, channel, 
which I will be linking in the description of this video. So check it out. He does actually a lot of uh, very, very detailed reviews of all the various uh, audio products he encounters in his life. So it's always interesting, and I always love uh, I always love your very down to earth style, Ali, for these kind of things. Very, very. How could I put it? Uh, small time compared to what you do and uh, your scripting. If anybody does actually watch my uh, videos after listening to this, please uh, be forgiving. I uh, have a nasty tendency of mumbling sometimes and tripping up. So hey. Oh well, I've say? I've basically like in in regards to the. the the, uh, the kind of uh, errors and, and scripting and that kind of thing. In my latest videos, I've become very, uh, very, very relaxed about that kind of thing, really, because I've realized that it's much easier to do this stuff when you... And, and no one in the end really cares that much, I suspect. They don't... As long as you're not just, just umming and ahhing for 20 minutes, uh, I think people are relatively forgiving if the content is good. Thank you very much, Alfred. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Thanks for yeah, having anyways. me. Yep, no worries. Thank you for coming on the show. Thanks to everyone who joined in the uh, Q&A. Please remember to click the like button if you enjoyed this discussion and leave a comment uh, because I'd love to hear your thoughts about this whole uh, Beats and Apple thing. Anyway, uh, from me, see ya.